Welcome to the Rugby Player's Guide to France, made just for you by Brightrock, a series of top South African rugby exports who spent time playing the game in France, look back at life on and off the rugby field and what it was like moving abroad to play the bounce in a new part of the world. Welcome to the Rugby Player's Guide to France and to the Seine, the river that runs through the centre of Paris. Now, before I jump into the river to try and dry off, an introduction to this week's town of France. Nice is part of the south coast, an area that's full of glamour and allure and a touch of the exotic, and it's home to the South African chef, Jan Hendrik van der Vestes, our first ever Michelin-starred chef. He's not the only South African, though, who knows Nice rather well. Welcome to the Rugby Players Guide to France, made just for you by Bright Rock, where I catch up with South African rugby players who've spent some time in France, not just showing why they're some of the world's great rugby players, but also discovering life in another country, another culture, another world it sometimes seems. And my very special guest this week is Pat Lambie. Pat, good to see you. Good day to you, Dan. Uh, a lot of focus on the, the world of rugby in France this year, and that's it's a space you know really well. I remember bumping into you in Paris uh, a number of years ago and just seeing this big beaming smile. Uh, you were a, a, a very happy resident of the French capital. That's true. Um, we absolutely loved our time in Paris. We fully embraced the culture and all the, the experiences that, that Paris has to offer. Um, and it was a very happy time for us there, unfortunately cut short. You have the option at a certain point in your career of looking at different places to go, and part of it, I think, is for the rugby, but there's also that life experience element. Was, was that a big part in deciding that France is where you wanted to go? It was. Um, look, I moved at an uh, in-between season time. It wasn't the beginning of a season or the end of one, um, and so I'd, I guess I didn't have um, hundreds of options. Um, but the idea of going to France, having to learn a new language, um, being involved or getting stuck into a whole way of life completely different to what we know in South Africa, that was very appealing. Um, and like I said, it was an extremely happy time for us and one that we look back on with, with such fond memories. You're back home now in Durban, and that's where you made your name as a rugby player. Uh, and we knew you for a certain style of rugby. When you moved over to France, how different was the rugby there, both in terms of uh, the style of game they played, but also the experience of, of playing in front of French crowds? Yeah, a few things that are, are very, very different to how we know rugby um, in South Africa. I mean, for starters, you play, your season starts the end of summer, and you play right through winter, and then sort of ends in the spring. So you play through all different conditions and um, the surfaces that you play on, some are synthetic, some are muddy and wet and slow, some are beautiful, short grass, dry and fast. Um, obviously there's this big um, home versus away psychology or mentality for French sides, which, um, which is also a big, uh, it's, a, it's a big change. Um, because of all the foreign players that have been introduced to the French league, though, that, that psychology and mentality is changing. But traditionally, your home games, you won. It was life and death. And your away games, um, you sort of sent some French players or a B team <laughs> and kind of forfeited. But all of those things were, were fully embraced. And um, it was wonderful to play in, in different competitions, the European competition, the French competition. In a new team with you know no pressure, really went over there to um, just have fun playing rugby again and you know fully express myself, which is is luckily for me what happened. When I watch games from France, one of the things that often strikes me in the club games, the crowd looked like they were almost on top of you. Some mm. of those stadiums, what was that like? The small, intimate stadiums are the best ones to play at, and and often you'd find those ones in the towns that are most passionate about rugby. So the whole town comes to standstill and, and they're all there on a, on a match day fixture. And so the atmosphere is really out of this world. Um, like you said, nice and close, very intimate. Uh, and obviously if you're, if you're the away team, it can be quite host a hostile environment to, to run out in front of. One of the things that rugby allowed you to do was see different parts of France, but I'm sure you also saw different parts of France in your own time and experienced mm. it. What was the, uh, the tourist side of it like? 
we did get around. We we did all your you know your nieces and your Bordeaux and your Biarritzes and your Capitans and um, you know a few other places on the outskirts of Paris, more in the country. So France really has a lot to offer. It's got beautiful scenery, um, delicious food, lovely wines, obviously, um, and a whole lot of rich cultural experiences to tap into. Tell me a bit more about Nice, because that mm. features quite uh, significantly this year. I've always thought of it as a south of France holiday destination. Mm. Is there a rugby element to it? And, and beyond that, what were the attractions for you for Nice? Beautiful beaches, um, beautiful promenades, uh, lovely markets and, and restaurants, and just a very sunny, laid-back experience. And that would link it uh, not dissimilarly to Durban. Uh, was that south of France? Was there a real Durban feel to it? There, there are certainly the similarities. Um, I'd say uh, on the west coast, a sort of Biarritz would maybe have a little bit more of a, um, a, a Durban feel just because there are waves there. Obviously, in East, there, there are no waves. Um, but yes, they're, they're, it's a beautiful coastline, um, you know, that southern border of France, as is the western coastline. So um, anyone who is going to the coast during the time of the World Cup, I think they will have a wonderful time. Uh, of all of the time, all the places you visited, uh, what was it for you that you brought back, you think, as the most rewarding aspect of your time in France? I think for, for my wife and I, for Kate and I, knowing that, um, we really, we, we left no stone unturned. We, we didn't try and recreate South African existence for ourselves whilst living in France. We threw ourselves into the language, into the culture. Um, I think for us, that was, the, that was the most valuable thing we could have done. Um, and it meant that we, we really had no regrets, even though we would have liked to have lived there for a bit longer. Um, it was something that we fully embraced during the time that we were there. Could you see yourselves going back to France one day? To visit, yes. Obviously, things are very different now that we have young children. We would love to take them back there to show them where we had lived and um, give them some of the experiences that we had whilst living there. But uh, I don't think we would move our family back to live in France permanently. <laughs> Well, as uh, you will have discovered from the last little while, the little Lambies could not ask for a better guide than their mum and dad, who've spent so much time and clearly loved the time they've had living over in France. That's the Rugby Player's Guide to France, made just for you by Brightrock, with a very special honorary Frenchman in Pat Lambie. Mm -hmm.